I wonder if you've heard that this week, the Queensland Parliament, it's going to make history. They're introducing legislation that is going to essentially enshrine a treaty with Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Now, the Premier here in Queensland, Anastasia Palaget, she announced the move at a lunch last week. We have the chance to finish unfinished business, to put wrongs right, to finally come together as one United State with mutual respect and absolute dignity for our diverse cultures and identities. Rose Barracliffe, who we catch up at this time for your history segment, she was there at the lunch when the Premier made that speech. And Rose is a Butchelor woman um, and also a First Nations advisor to the Queensland State Archives. Rose, good morning. What was it like to be there when you heard that announcement? Yeah, it was it was so wonderful to be at that lunch. There were um, something like 400 leaders from around the state, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous, community and industry, um, and to sit there in the room and to listen to the Premier give her speech, which was a wonderful speech, by the way. Um, yeah, it definitely felt like a momentous occasion that it is a historic occasion, will be historic this Wednesday when the Premier introduces the bill to Parliament. So what will the bill actually do? What are we talking about here that will be so historic? The bill will essentially allow um, the creation of the Treaty Institute, which will be responsible for moving forward with the treaty process um, between the Queensland Government and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and also acknowledging that that treaty process is is something that all Queenslanders will, will and should be part of as well. The biggest component of this process is going to be truth telling. Um, so there has already been quite a bit of work done leading up to this point where there was a working group that did community engagement around the state um, with Indigenous and non-Indigenous people to speak to them about what they thought about a treaty or treaties and what they thought should be involved. And pretty much unanimously, people said there needs to be truth telling first. So um, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, a lot of us grew up knowing stories of massacres. We pretty much all of us have stolen generations in our family or people who have um, been part of the uh, stolen wages story. And then from non, the non-Indigenous side, a lot of non-Indigenous people participating said, well, you know, we weren't told any of this history, we weren't taught this in school, and that needs to change. We all need to know the same story about how this state was founded. So that's going to be the first component. And where we go from there <laughs> is yet to be seen, I would say. Yeah, right. I mean, a long process ahead before we actually have a treaty in place, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Queensland, I understand, is leading the way on this, but the idea of creating a treaty with Aboriginal people, that's not actually new, right? There are archival records of colonists uh, arguing for treaties in the past here in Australia? Yeah, absolutely. And I think from my point of view, that was one of the things I loved about the Premier's speech the most is what she talked about in her speech was that this, is, this isn't new, in fact. There's archival records in the UK that talk about, that give instruction for Captain Cook and other early colonists to, to come here and, and uh, establish treaties with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Do we know, then, yeah, do we know why it didn't happen at the time? Um, I mean, the Premier talked about that uh, Joseph Banks uh, made a comment about the land being uninhabited and that sort of became the premise for everything that came afterwards. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of reasons why that didn't happen. Um, and But it wasn't just on Cook. There were other people who were here um, in the early days of the colony that did try to establish treaties, um, mainly down in New South Wales, but there was one in Western Queensland as well. So again, the Premier talked about this in her speech where um, he, there was John Bateman down in Port Phillip. He made an attempt to buy land there. Um, in the Swan River Colony tried to negotiate treaties there. So there's different places around the country where uh, individuals tried to make it happen, but it, it hasn't been done at a government level at this point in time. And Australia is the only colonised nation, colonised by the British, where 
we don't have a treaty between the First Nations and the colonial government, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Now, Rose, you're a First Nations person. You're also the First Nations Archives Advisor with State Archives. How much material is there in the State Archives that could be part of this truth-telling process and part of this process leading up to a treaty? Well, we already know that we've got thousands, if not tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of records at Queensland State Archives that document a lot of the issues that are going to be discussed in truth-telling. So things like child removals, um, stolen wages, uh, even massacres and deaths, we have a lot of records about those things in the records at Queensland State Archives. Um, so we know that the archival records that we hold, which by the way were created by the previous governments, the previous iterations of the Queensland Government, um, so we know that those are going to be a key part of the evidence that's required to support this process of truth-telling. I appreciate your time today. Thanks very much, Emma. Rose Barracliffe, uh, she's a Butchelor woman and a First Nations advisor to the Queensland State Archives. Woo!